Okay, good evening everyone and thank you very much for your patience here this evening. I'd like to call today's Committee of the Whole to order. And Council, as you look at the agenda here, um, what I would like to do is flip the order of 5.1 and 5.2. So we'll have 4.1, then we go to Memorial Dedication Policy, and then the draft uh, financial plan. If uh, everyone is good with that, so move that. And also if you can include that uh, we have some supplementary information as you approve the agenda. So that's moved and we're in Committee of the Whole, so that doesn't require a seconder. So uh, just all those in favor, opposed, that's carried unanimously. And so 4.1, uh, pleased to welcome, we have Jason Lamb and Colin Plant, uh, Director with the CRD, all the way from Saanich, um, here for the CRD Arts Development Services. And welcome. Please have a seat and please turn on your microphone. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Council, and to staff for making this available tonight for us to come and present. As uh, Your Worship said, my name is Colin Plant. I'm a Saanich Councillor, and missing one of my meetings tonight uh, to come out and see you. So I somewhat thank you, uh, but I also will be heading back afterwards, so please don't take offense if I leave right after. Uh, our presentation tonight will take the f a form of two parts. Uh, Mr. Lamb will do the first part, and he will kind of give you some of the nuts and bolts on how the CRD Arts Commission operates as a service, and then I will come back and speak to uh, some of the values around potentially seeing Souk consider joining and also uh, the reasons why we think it would make sense for Souk to join. So if you will accept uh, that, we will ask Mr. Lamb to present and he has a PowerPoint that we will also make available to you. So thank you again for having us and uh, Mr. Lamb will start. Hi, thanks so much for having us. Uh, I, I have to... Oh, so, sorry. it's all right. I can't tell between the red and green because I'm red, green, color blind anyway. So, um, so you're just going to flip them for me? I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, we're from the CRD Arts Development Service. I'm the manager of the service. Um, basically, what we're about is regional arts funding. We were established uh, a number of years ago uh, to support regional arts organizations. These are typically what we think of as organizations whose activities cross municipal boundaries and it's, uh, as opposed to local arts funding that you folks are very familiar with with your local arts organizations. Okay. Uh, the CRD uh, service was established, the arts service was established in 2001 and our bylaw says that it's to provide for the giving of assistance for the purpose of benefiting the community. Uh, next slide please. Thank you. That's it, right there. Oh, sorry. We're using the. Uh, we're not using a PowerPoint because the fonts get mixed up. We have a very particular type of font. Thank you. So that's just briefly a slide about the structure. The CRD, uh, CRD board, of course, is oversees everything at the CRD. Uh, the Arts Commission is a separate commission that's established also by bylaw. Uh, Colin Plant is the chair of that commission, and we have an appointed volunteer body that assists with um, advisory uh, advice and adjudication on issues relating to the regional arts. And of course, we have a staff, uh, currently 2.8 people. We just recently got a new person on, uh, and uh, we help those two, um, those two bodies uh, with their oversight. Next slide, please. Current participation, there's eight municipalities, uh, Saanich, Victoria, Oak Bay, Esquimalt, View Royal, Highlands, Machosan, and Sydney. Uh, next slide. There are two participation levels at the CRD for the art service. It's a little unusual of services at the CRD. Group one participates according to a thing called the intermunicipal formula. We refer to that as full participation, the group ones. And then we have a group two. Uh, we have three participants in the group two category. Uh, Highlands and Machosan participate at a voluntary level of 30%, and Sydney contributes at a level of uh, $15,000, which is slightly less than uh, their 30% level. We do have a bylaw that's coming up that uh, the amendment would change Group 2 participation to a set 30%, just for your information. And I just wanted to note, uh, acknowledge North Sandwich Council, although they don't participate as uh, in either 
uh, participation category, they have given an annual donation to the service uh, since 2013. Uh, we have a number of funding programs that we run, which is the assistance part of our bylaw. Uh, the operating grant program currently is at about $2.18 million. The project grant program is $214,000, and as a result of uh, some strategic planning and, and um, community consultation we did in 2016, we're piloting two new programs this year, the equity grant program and an incubator grant program, both at $25,000. Those will run for two years. So very, very briefly, the nutshell thumbnail description, operating grants support larger established organizations, ones with capacity and infrastructure, ones that do uh, ongoing annual programming. Next slide, please. Uh, there's a list of them. There were 29 of them in 2017. I won't read through the list, of course. Uh, I will note that we have uh, the president of one of those organizations, uh, Brian Butler, sitting in the audience with us. Uh, thank you. Next slide. The Project Grant is a smaller program. It's primarily designed for uh, smaller and emerging arts organizations, and it supports new and recurring activity, uh, mainly organizations that don't have the, the capacity to apply for operating. And there's a list of the ones we supported in 2017. There's 40 of them. And it ranges everything, visual arts, music, theater, the whole gamut of activity. Uh, we also manage a public art website that covers the capital region. Uh, I encourage you to look at it, Landmarks Public Art. Uh, you all have that in your package. And um, one great thing about that is you can create your own walking tour of public arts. You can choose the work you want and then publish out a map that tells you how to get there. And I think I'm going to turn it over to Colin at this point. Thank you. Can take over? Yes. Thank you. With the 10 minute presentation, it's difficult to be as broad as you'd like. And I would say that if you wish to reach out to Mr. Lamb or myself afterwards, we're more than willing to do that. But we certainly will respect the 10 minutes. So, as you can see, there are some new initiatives planned in 2018. We are not a service that just simply does the same thing year after year after year. And our members which are the municipal uh, councils represented by a member on the, the Arts Commission help set that direction. And we have a strategic planning session every four years. We have a mission. We have a, 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 an annual process like all the CRD services where we review our service plan. If I could just ask you to scroll through, please. So I think most of us uh, in this room would suggest that the arts do play an important part in our community. And so this CRD Arts Commission is a way for us as local government people to show our support. And the way in which we do that uh, is as through the programs James has said. I used to live in Souk for six years. I own property still in Souk. I follow what goes on in Souk. And I think uh, that Souk has a vibrant arts community. You don't have to look very far uh, to think of things that happen in Souk that would, in my mind, benefit from being a participant in this service. Uh, next slide, please, and I'll get into that specifically. It's very difficult to show you uh, pie charts like this and expect to go into it in great depth, but approximately 8% of an arts organization's budget in this statistic will show you is coming from CRD Arts Commission funding. So it's not insignificant, but it is not the vast majority is coming from the CRD Arts Commission. And I'm assuming you have one below me here. Yeah, very good. Next slide, please. Um, these are some of the statistics that we received when we did our Building Our Arts Future uh, program with a strategic planning session. We came out to Souk, actually, because one of the initiatives that was a part of this was to go to organizations and places that weren't currently involved with the Arts Commission. And so we came and did a presentation out in Sea Park and heard from residents. And so this data here shows you that people support the arts. I don't think that's probably a huge reach for you to think of your residents. They go to the Fine Arts Show. They go to the Sir Harbor Players. They go to the Philharmonic. And so this is just showing you that this is not a fringe activity. This is done by the vast majority or they uh, support it. Next slide, please. Uh, nine and ten percent, <laughs> nine and ten percent, sorry, nine out of ten say they either uh, are interested or they're actively participating. So yes, Souk may not have the Belfry Theatre, the Pacific Opera, the professional organizations that you see in the core, but the people who go to them and volunteer don't know municipal borders. 
and so they support them. I, I was surprised to meet Mr. Butler myself, the president of the Victoria Symphony, being a Souk resident. That's wonderful. And it shows you how people from all over the region support the arts, no matter where they live. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm going to leave that for, for you to read at your leisure. Uh, the arts are not a fringe activity. The organizations that we help have employees. They contribute to the economy. This is not philanthropic. They leverage the monies received from the Arts Commission to create other opportunities to get grants, and they put on programming. The multiplier effect is something that applies to arts a lot. Next slide, please, looking at the time. I'm going to suggest you could look at that at your own discretion. Next slide, please. Uh, in 2012, 177.3 million, and we invest approximately 2.5 million through the CRD which is the 8% of an operating organizational budget on average. Uh, what this will show you on the next is the McPherson and Royal. It's difficult to get statistics to show you exactly where people are coming from to see every art event, but the next two slides show you the McPherson. And approximately from Souk, 1.74% of the people who are going to the McPherson are coming from Souk, which would indicate that of, that's about half of what we would think if your municipal population was 100% of the whole number. So 3% of the region is Souk, and 1.7 of them for the McPherson make up that participation. I've run out of time, so I don't know if it's possible to go to the next slide or if it can be extended by two minutes. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, there are two service levels that you can consider joining at. There's the full 100%, and I would suggest that's probably not something that Souk would automatically consider. I think that the 30% level two, which would be approximately a $5 per Souk taxpayer or per assessment, would be something to consider at a strategic planning session or at a budget set setting. The $5 would be something that would amount to approximately $30,000. That would be requisitioned through the, the CRD and would not be directly paid from Souk Council budgets, but rather through the requisition of CRD. Next slide, please. Just to compare, again, you can read this at your discretion, you would see the $4.96 would be the 30%. The $32,000 would be the requisition for a, a year uh, based on current numbers for 2017. And just to give you a context, and you know this better than I do, the regional parks, you would know that from Souk, the average household is contributing $27, and Sea Parks, $146. The requisition of about $5 would be approximately 1% increase on your CRD requisition. And you would then be able to be a part of a service that has a budget of $2.5 million so that all the arts organizations in Souk could then apply to get that funding. And that's the takeaway. If you are a part of this service, then your arts organizations in the district of Souk have access to these funds. Some municipalities choose to put their arts funding into the CRD Arts Commission because they know it will then come back to them in the opportunities and you're not having individual arts grants nights that you may have at some councils in the region and maybe here as I saw for example with the, the fine arts show. So I would ask you to, uh, I acknowledge I'm two minutes over, to please consider at a future meeting the economic impact of joining to your residence of five dollars approximately for the level two. I don't expect you to join tonight. I know you're a little bit lighter than you would have for a full attendance, uh, but that we would also be happy to answer any further questions. So tonight is a presentation to introduce you to the service and for ask you to consider it at a future time because it is a service that benefits the whole region and I definitely could see it benefiting Souk Arts organizations and your residents. So thank you Mayor Tate council and staff and the audience I'm sorry we've gone a couple minutes over no, thank you very much Councillor Plant uh, it was great that you made the trip out thank you so much and also providing this information I think it gives us all a little bit more understanding as to what the service does um, do I have questions from members of council Councillor Pearson yes thank you uh, Councillor Plant for coming out and, and Mr. Lamb um, it 
I think it's important to realize is that you know we're part of a of the CRD area and and you know for an eternity we've you know we've driven from Souk to go see you know the art shows and, and things in Victoria and I think it's part of that that ongoing discussion so I have no issue uh, supporting this in principle um, I think we'll bring it forward at a, at a you know at our, at our budget deliberations and, and have that discussion but I really thank you for the presentation because it it drives home that message that you know we are a we are a region and, and we have a lot of services that are in the core area that I think we need to protect you know there, there's some heritage buildings and things in there that also are part of I'm sure the arts community like the Royal Theatre and McPherson Playhouse where there's where's all those things that that we've attended like for an eternity, and I, and I think it's time. So, thank you. Other comments from members of council? Okay. Okay. What thank I like about it is just that groups can access our local groups would be able to access funding um, outside of what we're able to offer. Uh, so, at this point, like, does council want staff to potentially bring information on the funding levels to a budget discussion? Okay, so look for that motion, please, Councillor Pearson, then. Okay, I'll make the motion that uh, it be uh, discussed at our upcoming budget deliberations. Okay. Permission. We don't need a seconder because we're no. in committee, so we'll have that come to uh, yep, upcoming true. budget. Yep. Staff has the motion there. Okay, any discussion on the motion? See none. All those in favour? Opposed? That's carried unanimously. Okay, thank you, Director Plant or Councillor Plant. <laughs> And we'll be in touch if we have other questions. And thank you, Mr. Lamb, as well, for taking okay. the time. Safe thank travels Thank you, Your home. Worship. Thank you, Council. Great. Okay, so moving on into our agenda here, our next item is then 5.2, which is the memorial dedication policy. So this is an item that um, we had talked about uh, very briefly, I think, in December and asked to come forward for further conversation here at our first committee of the whole, which is tonight. And this is on the policy itself. So maybe I'll turn it to staff if there's some comments on it. Thank you, Your Worship. I can try and comment on this. Um, I have a little bit of knowledge. So essentially the way that this differs from the original proposed policy is that each dedication would be the purchase of a plaque that could be placed on existing uh, park benches or picnic tables um, throughout the district parks at Whiff and Spit and the dedication would last for a period of five years with no option for renewal however should council decide to spend fifty thousand dollars on constructing a memorial wall at Whiff and Spit all plaques would then be given the option after their five years to either be returned to the family or to be moved to the memorial wall at Whiff and Spit. I think that about covers it. If there's any questions, I can try and answer them for you. So what would happen to the benches that are currently there then? My understanding is that there is a wait list, so yes. um, currently any plaques that are on them would remain in place until the memorial wall is constructed. Those plaques would then be moved to the memorial wall, and then the benches that are there will be repaired or will be placed anew, will be district assets purchased and paid for by the district, and that anybody on the wait list for a dedication could then place it when a spot becomes available. Hmm. Okay. Comments from members of council? Councillor Berger? Thank you. Um, and thank you for the report. In reading through the report, I don't really love any option but I like bits and pieces of all of them um, I would really like to hear from people that are a part of the program right now as well that's sort of my first comment um, the combination piece that I think maybe we need to get towards would be uh, and again I'm sort of mixing all three of them so forgive me for jumping between all three options um, I like the idea of having a one-year term let me backtrack a little bit all of the information I've read through thus far, going back to CRDH, every single agreement does talk about a 10-year term. The part that is missing for me is what happens after the 10 years. Mm -hmm. Some of the 
policies state that the plaque will be either returned to you. Um, none of the policies that I could find stated that there was another fee attached until the 2014 policy. So for me, I wrestle with what works best for the community as to where we go at that 10-year term because it isn't clearly defined right now from what my understanding of the policies are. So in looking at what staff's recommending, I like giving all plaque holders right now a year to decide. I think that that's really important that we come up with a standpoint. Whatever we decide tonight, I think that there needs to be a full year so they can have time to talk and figure out what's happening. Part of me also says if there was verbiage under what they agreed with that it was in perpetuity, then that should stand because that was the agreement. I don't, because we don't have a lot of those agreements, I don't, I don't know, I shouldn't speculate, but I don't know that we have a lot of those agreements. Um, but going forward, I think if we design something that would be um, after your 10-year term, and if you still want to have the bench, and if the bench needs replacing, from the report I can see, the replacement of the bench is roughly 1850. So that should be an option to the person, possibly, if that's palatable, that they can then replace that bench should it need to be replacing and still keep that. If they're not in favor of that and they would like the plaque removed and put on the memorial wall that's being proposed, I think that should be an option as well. So I think this is a good form for us to have it at a community of the whole because I don't know what the answer is, but I think we need to come up with something better. And again, I like bits and pieces of all three, but I think because it is such a sensitive nature, I think people that join the program have to have a really clearly defined outlook of what they're joining. And then I like the slow stepped process of, you know, on your 10th year going forward, do you, if your bench needs to be repaired, you have the option to replace the bench at the tune of 1850 or whatever our policy states. If you're not interested and you would like that plaque then moved to the memorial wall, that should be an option to them. At, and it says in, in the report that that could be done at no charge. And I like that because people have already bought into the dedication program. So I guess I'd like to hear what everybody else thinks. And I definitely want to hear from the people that already have benches and people that are wanting benches. I do know that there's a wait list. And I remember in 2014, the wait list was getting longer. And that's why we changed the policy. And the policy was to erect this monument that all of the people that were on the wait list or a discussion would ensue for plaques to be placed at Wiffenspit. So, unfortunately, sorry, I don't have a clear direction. I want to hear what everybody else says, but I like, I don't like the policy as it is given right now, and I don't love one particular option. I like a, a combination of them. Thank you, Councillor Berger. I think it's reasonable that we spend some time with this and have it right. Um, I like the idea of the wall as well, because maybe not everyone has $1,800 for to come up with for a bench, right? But um, the spit may be particularly, you know, a place of importance for somebody. Um, when I think of a wall, I just think of like a plain wall. And when I was down there, I thought, you know, gee, the, the gateway to the spit is looking kind of shabby. It's like that blue um, tubing. I don't know what else to call it. It's like metal, you know, and it swings open, obviously, for access for uh, the Parks Department. And I thought, I wonder if you could do some sort of a stone kind of gate to the spit that would actually be more attractive and then you could have the plaques there. Because part of it too is um, I have family members who, let's say we had a bench on the spit, they would not physically be able to walk to it anymore because of the spit's very long. I know it's flat, but if it, when walking becomes a challenge, it's, it's too... They can't make it to the end, but maybe it would be a time where if it's at the beginning, rather than where would the wall be? Would it just be over there and then you won't see it? It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Uh, whereas if it was something because of the entryway and maybe it's a way to sort of make the park look a bit more attractive and have it have this feature tied in, but I don't know what that costing would look like. It would have to be stone. There would still have to be a mechanism that it opens. So maybe that is, is more lightweight and then you could have stone that it could anchor to. And then it's sort of there with some sort of, you know, these people, we recognize those that have walked here or something. Um, you know, that's a thought. 
Um, I agree that if there's, I think this is where staff would need to provide us with some information, not necessarily every application, but are there some where it looks like there's an understanding that it's in perpetuity, then I think that needs to be honored. Uh, maybe others, it's more clear, I think. Um, I, I'm sort of with you on that. But at the same time, it's uh, the bench, too, we are aware have failed. It's a marine environment. It's metal. There are sometimes abuse to our park, uh, but there is abuse that occurs. So then it's the case of what happens when the bench falls apart. I mean, really, the donation covers off the cost of the bench, and then over time it wears out. So then it's the case of, okay, what does replacement look like? I think at some point... Um, you know, a picnic area towards at the end of the spit would be a nice feature to have for people to enjoy. And could you look at then that would provide a picnic table option available on the spit, which would be nice. That could then have more people have something there. So, um, but I think, yeah, we need to look at, um, to me, when I hear the memorial wall, I just picture like a stone wall uh, and that starts to have little things and it seems kind of drab to me. Uh, empty wall could lead to tagging because it's a blank wall. So how does it sort of, and that's where I think we'll get that information a bit more as we look at budgeting, but I sort of thought. So I'm just sort of throwing out the entryway as something to consider, but I'm still stuck on, <laughs> I'm with you there with the policy. Response. Thank you. Just one more thing further to um, what you're saying, and, and as you were talking, for me, the, the real big importance is how to handle these dedications in with the most respect possible. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it would be great, I mean, I do see some people in the audience that um, have purchased a bench down there, but it would be hard to get all of those people together at one time. Yeah. I think it would be great if we could issue a survey and maybe just ask people that have, have paid for benches down there and see what the appetite would be. I mean, we talk about the word wall, I'd rather use the word monument. I mean, I went, um, my grandmother passed away last month and she had an urnment. And so there are beautiful monuments that plaques are bestowed upon. And I think there are, there's something we can work with. Um, but I, for me, it's really hearing from the people of Souk and I think it would be really great for people that have plaques everywhere in our district. Maybe if we could just get together or create some sort of survey to see what people are thinking and feeling. I'll just turn over to our corporate officer for a response. Yes, um, I just wanted to point out that the benches down at Whiff and Spit are going to have a variety of lifespans because yep. of the salt water and providing that 10 year option may not be feasible as they may not last 10 years and then you get into the predicament of, you know, do some people might have to repay it seven years, eight years, 10 years, it could really vary. So that was why staff were proposing to get away from the person buying the dedication from actually contributing or purchasing the bench or picnic table asset that the district would own those, the district would replace them, and that the plaque, you know, if they're still within that five or ten year period of the dedication, whatever council chooses to go with, it would just be moved on to the new and improved um, asset when it was replaced or purchased or built anew, I guess, at that point, if that helps. Other thoughts from members of council? Councillor Pearson? Well, I, I like the first part of the recommendation that council rescind the memorial dedication policy, and I think that's pretty standard, and I think that, I think we're all on board with the current policy was long and confusing and didn't really spell out everything. So I think that, I mean, I'm, I'll disagree with uh, with, with uh, the mayor and, and Councillor Berger who have commented is that I think it's something wor more workable has to be come up with and and an opportunity to spend some time with, with uh, people who are interested in purchasing not only now but into the future. I mean, uh, we could sit here and come up with all kinds of good ideas, but I think the, the critical piece is the, the, the people who want to, to participate in it. You know, um, the benches on uh, Whip and Spit are, you know, wonderful and, and they bring memories, but they're along the Galloping Goose Trail. They're in other places and, and uh, you know, there's there's picnic tables down at Souk Flats. There's there's all kinds of things that are out there. So, again, it's a, it's got a personal twist to it and I think that um, to make it work, we should uh, form a committee or with the, with this, with the arts 
and Beautification Committee that discussion. So, I, I mean, I, th I just, I don't know what the answer is, and I mean, I don't think we're going to say sit up here and say, oh, we have the perfect solution. But again, I think it's a, it's that open public dialogue that will 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 help guide a new appropriate policy. Thank you. So, I like that. I like the I like a working group, a task force to sort of um, take this on. The uh, Souk program of the arts, I think that needs to come forward and we need to, I mean, that could, it could potentially fit there as well. It has a much broader context, though. Um, we would need to advertise. So, I mean, that's another option is to send it to that committee um, rather than trying to f form two at the same time. Councillor Loggins? Um, I wouldn't, I, I agree that it, I wouldn't mind having it go to the arts committee. I think it does fit uh, there as well um, and is it possible that we could get a, an open-ended survey out to everyone who has purchased a plaque before then and then uh, when it does go to that committee then they have something to work with already I just I my only worry is that if we have uh, have a committee then it will be limited to the number of public who might be able to come due to time or whatever um, so just getting that survey out beforehand might help guide that process Okay, so I think we have a resolution right now about um, that came about uh, through notice of motion that the Souk Program of the Arts Committee be reinstated. So perhaps then at the next regular council meeting um, that we ratify, I think there needs to be much like the land, I can't remember land and development or land and engagement committee, um, that there needs to be a, a solid resolution that goes out that um, the terms of reference be adopted and that staff advertise for the Souk Program of the Arts Committee and then that this, um, that we can then place this as an action item for that committee. Like we need to get the committee live again and then we can start ascribing it some action points but and have sort of the two together. And then at the same time, I like the idea of a survey as well. Uh, and of course, anyone that can't attend tonight, um, that. You know our, our, you know, our doors always open for to get some feedback on this. And of course, I'd like to hear from the members of the public that are here. So, I'm just sort of throwing ideas of a motion out there for you to think about, Councillor Berger. Yes, thank you. And I think that's the right avenue. I think heading down the soup program, the arts way that they deal with all sort of public art. And I know this isn't art per se, but it is a, a public display of a dedication. So I think it, that's the right fit. Um, in the meantime, though, I think that it's important, as Councillor Pearson said, um, I'll make a motion that Council rescind the memorial dedication policy 12.1-2004. Uh, okay, so we'll start with that. Uh, we don't need a seconder, so we'll just rescind that. I'll call the question on rescinding the current policy. I'll I'm sorry, just... Again, do, uh, it goes to regular council. So, so, does the recommendation need to say that the committee of whole recommends to yeah. council? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or corporate officer? I do want to call for public input as well. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just kind of getting the sense and anticipating that uh, council may not adopt the other policy that's presented there but in the event that you do not then suggest perhaps that a motion be made to staff to just receive applications but not to act on them because we won't have a policy in place to address them in the interim until a new policy does get adopted yep that makes sense yep that's for applications as people come forward for so anywhere will, in the district yeah I will add that to my motion thank you staff Okay, so I'll call the question on rescinding but continuing to receive uh, applications. All those in favor? Opposed? That's none opposed. It's carried unanimously. I'd like to invite um, any members of the public here tonight that would like to speak on the memorial bench policy. Thank you. Thank you. May I have your name, please? Your name and address. My name is Linda Nex, N E X. And I'd just like to talk for uh, just a few minutes about the memorial benches. When we applied for the bench, 
we did not take it on ourselves. I was I spearheaded it, but I am so hurt that the council has not even taken, had not even taken, I should say, our feelings in this matter. I had a garage sale to raise the sixteen hundred dollars for Judy Jameson's bench. I got that money in one day because I had her friends, people who hardly knew her, but knew what kind of person she was, how she was involved in the community, and came down, and they just wanted to know where to leave the money. They weren't going to buy anything because they didn't need anything from our garage sale. But we had more people coming down our driveway saying, where's the jar? Where do I give this money? And I told all of them that this was in perpetuity mm -hmm. because that's what we were told. And we weren't told 10 years, 5 years. We were not told donation, nothing. We were told it was forever, as long as the bench remained in good working or order. Mm -hmm. It wasn't damaged. That bench is not damaged. It should be there for our Judy. And there's probably these people in this room who know her. Don't disappoint her. Don't disappoint us. We should be grandfather, those of us who have given the what I was told back then, by your members of your staff in the downstairs. They told us that it would be forever. And the woman who took me there to see the spot, she never said anything. Nobody, nobody ever said anything that it was for five or ten years and then it went. You know, if you will continue to have this meeting, I will continue to come here and talk about Judy. Don't disappoint her. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Nex, for attending this evening. And I, I'm certain I speak for all of us. Like, our intent is to really honor uh, folks like your friends and others and to find uh, the best way to honor those memories. And that's, that's why we're having this conversation yeah. it, today. It's the bench we want. It's of not course. a plaque up on the wall. Thank you very much. My name is Doug Nax, obviously related to Linda. Although I was not directly involved, I certainly was there. And I certainly dealt with people at City Hall with regards to the bench, and I said, oh, we'll go out and buy one. Oh, no, 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 in the interest of conformity, we want to buy them. Okay, fine, what's that going to cost? Well, there's a cost of the cement going in, but our people will put it in and buy it and so on and so on. I said, how much is that? They said, well, the whole thing is $1,600. Well, I read in here somebody who talked about 1625 I don't remember the 25 Maybe it was there. I don't know. And <clears throat> nothing was mentioned. It should be grandfathered automatically. And you send out three letters to Linda, and every one of them mentioned donating to the city. It was not donated. It was bought on our behalf. We paid for it. Somebody here is not doing their homework in as much looking back and finding out what happened. And probably you won't have any record of it because there wasn't any. Nobody signed anything. And the ones that were crummy and needed, I heard an excuse. Oh, well, the wood had to be replaced. Hey, go and look at the new ones that we bought 10, 12, 13 years ago, before any 10-year stuff. And uh, uh, they were ones that people put up when we were not incorporated. Mm -hmm. They were ratty old wooden things, and they bit the dust. Um, 
uh, I mean, I'm really upset about this. This is just nonsense. It's, uh, you're not doing your homework. And if you are doing your homework, there's nothing there. So therefore, you should know nobody signed anything. Uh, the guy, a guy on TV came on and said in the Squamalt, he understood that when his wife, da 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 da, and he signed the thing. Sure, he did, long after we got the benches up. And now, you people, I got three letters con that contained I. My wife got three letters that contained donation in it. There was no donation. You send us a letter saying thank you or whatever for your donation. I'm sorry, that's just not true. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nex. We do appreciate your, your coming tonight. Thank you. Well, it should be automatically grandfathered, like uh, a lot of the bylaws and a lot of the mm -hmm. uh, building codes and so on is grandfathered until something's going to change. Yes. No. Understood. Okay. Oh, was, by the way, I'm a newcomer to Souk. I've only been here 45 years. Well, welcome, sir. It's nice to have you. <laughs> Sorry. We should grandfather this chair. Um, Jeff Bateman, t 7083 Briarwood, taking this opportunity to... Um, I, I don't have a vested interest in this. I haven't read the 158 pages of this agenda. Uh, this strikes me as a, another growing pain in a growing municipality. Um, I would hope, I, I think grandfathering is a, a good idea. I'm thinking off the top of my head, the, the word's been mentioned twice tonight. Um, perhaps, and, and then for, for new um, infrastructure, new benches, we need to follow some model examples of best practices in other communities, because this, this kind of thing happens everywhere. So let's, instead of maybe going back, doing surveys, creating another committee, uh, maybe take charge, look at best practices, create, um, and perhaps the best practices are in this new document, which I've not looked at. And then perhaps on the grandfathering front, I don't know, does, would Judy, Judy's bench possibly be shared with other plaques on the same bench? There's Is that already, an option? There's already a uh, hundred or more people that are involved with it. They donated on that to one, it. Right, we I saw see. One plaque covers one yeah. awful lot. We yeah. can't say because we can't speak for everyone. And right. I could not get a hold of everyone. Mm. And we wouldn't know who half of them yeah. were. I walked in the grocery store the other day because of the thing on TV. And she said, oh, I didn't know you knew Judy, Judy Jameson. Mm -hmm. I'm a good friend of hers. Mm -hmm. Hey, she's become a good friend of mine, an yeah. acquaintance. I never knew she knew Judy. A lot of people don't know there mm -hmm. would be no fall mm -hmm. fair today if mm -hmm. it wasn't for my wife and Judy. Uh -huh. It was run into the ground beyond belief. Well, I guess my final comment would be it's, it's a tricky one ahead of you, and it seems you're doing your best efforts, um, and hopefully everyone can find some middle ground on this. It's not easy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bateman. Are there any other members of the public here that would like to speak? Okay, so just um, touching on the best practices, um, I think in this in the materials there has been um, information that came from other municipalities, and that's sort of how staff have arrived at putting forward what we have here today. So that sort of work has been done, and of course council can accept it or not to. Um, I I like the idea of grandfathering. I just also want to find a way to be um, inclusive of others. Um, that uh, that would also like to have something there, and that's where um, I know because I know that there is other people. There's a lot. Oh, there is a wait list for benches in this park, and even though you encourage a place like John Phillips, we could really use a couple more benches. It just depends on where people spend their time, and Whiffen Spit's our most popular place. Um, Councillor Berger. 
Yes, thank you. And just further um, to when this comes to council with the recommendation to rescind the previous policy, um, I'm just wondering if we could uh, ask staff to bring a bit more information. I know last time we got a list of all of the people that have a bench at Whiff and Spit. What I'd be interested to know is when that bench was purchased and if there is an agreement. I think that would help me going forward with, you know, how long has this been here? If there's no written agreement in, in stone that the district has, then in my mind that's grandfathered because there's nothing that says, has an end date. So um, again, I'm just sort of speaking off the cuff, but I think that would be an important piece of information for us to see. Okay, so are you looking for that when, like, because this, the committee will make a recommendation to council and that the policy be rescinded. So do you want that information to come forward together or can it go, I think that's where then does, we rescind it as part one and then part two with that, other conversation then I think we need to decide where it's going to land so does council want to have this discussed at a future committee the whole with that information or have it go to like the spa committee with that information or my personal feeling is that this has it's been a ripple in the community and I would like to try and ease that mm -hmm. so I think sort of the sooner the better I, I mean I really think that it's a great idea for it to go to the spa committee as far as developing a monument or some sort of um, dedicated place at Whiff and Spit but I think for the people that received the letters I believe there was 28 people I think for them to sort of wrap this up and give yeah. them comfort I think I would like to do that I would like to wrap this up and give people comfort so they know if they don't have a signed agreement or if it's been however long and if grandfathering is the appropriate way to go then that needs to be told to them I think that those people need that comfort so I would like to see it come sooner than later okay that piece of it okay sir did you have another comment yes uh, can you please turn on the microphone thank you oh I was ahead of you um, <laughs> who determines how many benches can go down there there is oodles and oodles and oodles of space, and the, the spit is such a novelty, the fact that along the shoreline or thereabouts, the benches were uh, uh, end on end, what's the, I mean, you're not ruining something that's uh, naturally beautiful, it's just a weird kind of thing, the spit sticking out like that, with a lighthouse on the end, it's not used anymore, uh, what's wrong? The shrubs that are there, some of them are uh, absolutely horrid. The bench looks better than that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that is, I've seen, when I look through the policies, it started out with something like 10 on one side, two facing the other, and then the number has changed, and then I think the last time, at one point, it was sort of limiting at a certain number. But again, that's something that we can look who at. De who determined that? Council does. Yeah, council would uh, set that number in whatever the policy is. Yeah, okay. So we, that's a good point is to revisit Not that. only that, there's oodles of other parks around. I know, but that's where the right spit out is so here. popular. Exactly. We could use, but you don't want to for it, like, if someone want, really wants to be in the spit, that's where some, that's where they want their bench to be. They don't want it to be in a different well, park. Well, cross that bridge when you come to it. Yes, sir. I we, mean, if you tell don't well. somebody no, uh, then they go somewhere else, and there's lots of places to put them. No, I completely agree. Thank you. Thank you. Have we called the question on rescinding the policy? Yes. Okay. So then the next part is then that um, I'm sort of sensing that, that this should go to the SPA committee. I think that when Councillor Parkinson was at a previous meeting, um, when she was on the, the panel for arts and beautification, they had actually come up with an idea on the memorial wall that didn't go into the budget at that time. So it would be good to get that. So that's where you're right in terms of she'd have some background information there and could have the conversation. I don't know if my gate idea is worth pursuing or not. Um, maybe let the more artistic folk. I just think the blue looks ugly. That's just my view. It needs to be refreshed in some way so it could... Maybe both need to happen, but we'll get that information. So sort of then looking then that, um, but we do need to get the SPA committee live. So looking for, uh, I think this sort of highlights not having it is a problem. So 
in terms of the you know motions then um, would it be helpful then I'm going to staff that council puts forward a motion asking that the spa committee and the advertising happen or would that just is that just happening thank you your worship um, just for council's information there that when spa existed in 2016 before it disbanded it did comprise a new terms of reference that was put forward to council council referred them to staff but before they could come back the committee was disbanded so there is a new terms of reference that is sitting there that council will need to look at and adopt before we can then proceed with any advertising and fulfilling of membership but yes I think that tonight council could just make a motion that it be referred to the spa committee once established or something along those lines okay so that'll be the motion then is that council refer the policy to the spa committee once it is once it is reformed once is that the language is reformed once it is established thank you and um, I also want to capture Councillor Berger's comments about having that listing so there's sort of we can do these sort of broken out so I wrote this one down first so maybe move that Councillor Loggins um, I was wondering if we could put the preliminary survey in there as well as, as additional information we don't obviously have to have the survey out by the next <laughs> meeting but perhaps a just a couple of questions or something could come forward so that we can get that out too before the okay so okay let's do them in sec but let's do them sort of one at a time so I can just keep my train of thought here so the first motion then refer to the spa committee once is that the that a the policy that the policy and wall or memorial monument <laughs> policy and monument be referred to the spa committee once it's established will someone move that moved by Councillor Pearson okay all those in favor opposed is carried unanimously um, the second is that council the committee of the whole refer um, direct staff to provide council with a listing of all current bench holders and any information on an agreement if available with dates just yeah okay um, that committee of the whole direct staff to provide council with a listing of current benches dates and agreement if any okay sorry just to jump in um, that might be an appropriate spot because we're talking about these particular people that already have benches that might be inappropriate to and comprise a okay so just I think I just think something if we mail all of them individually asking you know how, how do we make this I don't, I don't know the right terminology I don't know yep. what the survey would look like but just come up with something so we can get feedback from the people that currently have benches as to how they feel going forward okay and draft a survey a survey questionnaire um, to obtain feedback does that work for staff for us Sorry. have did someone move that councillor Loggins um, I'll move it yes. okay thank and you the, and just uh, specifically that the survey would be about what the steps are moving forward I know we've luckily we've received a lot of feedback and that's why we're discussing this but yep. I do want to make sure that it's constructive for the spa committee yeah so that's where I think staff will um, take a stab at putting something together for us and then we can sort of go with that um, you know look at that language and if you have any ideas um, as you think about this meeting uh, just shoot them over to our staff as well so that they can incorporate them too I think a question is something like when I think about this is um, um, how do you feel about sharing um, uh, how do you feel about additional plaques being placed on your bench um, I think if some people I know that would say depends on who that is 
but maybe it's a way to make peace at some point. I, I don't know. Maybe that, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's important, but maybe it is, right? Um, maybe I watched, Rome, read Romeo and Juliet a little too recently. I just, you know, bringing people to get, again, that would be a question. Um, uh, you know, what would you like to have happen after your, after the bench is past its serviceable life? Um, what do you think of the wall? You know, those things, corporate officer. You know what I mean. <laughs> yes, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to clarify so that um, it's Council's intent that the survey be done before SPA reviews the policy? Or, or Yes. Okay. So okay. this way it's the case. It's an action item for them. And then here's some feedback now from some bench holders and just something to sort of look at. But council, in the meantime, will sort of vet the answer, the, the survey questions as they go out. But then that feedback will all go to the SPA committee, right? So, what we're looking for is a report with the listing to come to council, listing dates, if there's agreement or isn't there, and then here are some questions that we would put forward to the survey, and then all of that information. Then, when this after the SPA committee is up, that'll be all go to them, and they give their feedback to us anyway. Does that make sense? Sorry, so staff would be just developing some suggestions for a survey that SPA would conduct? Council or? will. So that would need to come to council, and we'll send that out in advance of SPA forming. Okay. Thank you. So it's just like something that we're going to get going right away, and then uh, once, you know, hopefully we get some feedback, and then it'll all be there as the first priority. And in the meantime, we'll put some monies aside in the financial plan, uh, we sort of have an estimate there on what that could look like, and then maybe the SPA committee can take that and say, okay, what can we make work given the information, the work they've done previously, and with this, this number work. So then we have money in the budget for the wall or the fence or the monument and, you know, have some pieces. Good. Go ahead, Mr. Blanco. Uh, yes, uh, Chair, I'd just like to add, we, uh, we are going to have a consultation piece as part of the budget, and it will be like a, a survey um, or participatory kind of thing. So there would be um, maybe a means to even, you know, we'd have it so it doesn't just say budget and no one wants to go there. It could start off like something on our web page saying memorial um, bench survey, but it would take you into that uh, budget consultation uh, document. So that would just be one part of it. So we can collect all that information from anyone who wants to and definitely send it to all the existing people as well at, by mail or whatever. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great because I'd also like to hear from people on the wait list at some point and how can we get those ideas and then I've received some information on some memorial parks that exist in other communities and some beautiful things that they've done. So that's what sort of led me to the whole entryway piece, but it depends on, you know, that it, that specific area was a memorial park or this is a public park, so they're a little bit different, but it, it's just gathering the details. So thanks for sharing that because I think that that'll be a great tool for us. Okay, so I'll call the question on this motion then. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. And I think that, is there anything else under this item of business for the present time? Everyone's clear? We're all good? Excellent. Okay, so that brings us to our draft 2018-2022 five-year financial plan. So I will turn this over to our finance director, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, the report is on, I believe, page five. Um, so this is basically introducing the five-year plan. So um, it's in the public. Thank you in the public realm and we can start uh, discussions and everything on it. So this is a draft at, at this stage. Um, it, based on the meeting from last week, I did add in the, uh, the staircases, the two staircases, that the one, the Murray Road one and the Soup Bluffs one. So, um, but I did highlight in the, um, and I'll go through the slide deck in a minute, that there is opportunity still to um, get the draft tax increase number right now, which is at 4.45, there's opportunity to get it down, I believe, um, closer to just under 3%. So um, we can work on that together based on what your wishes are for certain capital projects. 
Um, and then just, uh, so the report basically just introduces it for information at this time. Uh, the, the first sort of budget type meeting, I believe, is February 5th with the community grants um, coming forward. So that, that's kind of the, the kickoff. And then um, we'll make sure that some dates are scheduled uh, maybe on the 29th or on the 5th for the actual departmental um, deliberations. For example, the fire department budget will come forward. Uh, probably the whole community safety one we'll start with first. So. Um, so I think I'll just, there are attachments to the report and um, they're pretty self-explanatory, but I think I'll just run through the first one, which is the slide deck, which is um, my sort of overview. So uh, it starts off with just a snapshot of the overall expenditures. So, uh, uh, whoops, we seem to have lost the names here. Hmm. Something in cyber world has stolen our names of our areas anyway. <laughs> Maybe they can take over. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's um, the attachments are all have the names and everything. So there's um, a chart that starts off with the total expenditures of 20.5 million, um, and then the the areas that they're broken out to based on the bylaw. So there's debt servicing, capital expenditures, transfers to reserves, and then operating expenditures. Um, so the, the pie chart shows a total of those, and I don't need to really go into that much more. Um, yeah, it's just not showing. That's fine. No big deal. You can use that one if it works. Yep. No, nope, none of them are working. Yeah, I can leave it up there anyway if you can. Um, and the next slide is on... I'll go... I'll use this here now. This slide is a breakdown of the operating expenditures... Um, and again, it, it does have the names on the actual attachment. Um, so the operating expenditure total is 13.2 million and uh, is broken down mainly. Uh, development services is uh, just over 2 million. Community safety, just over 4 million. Uh, sewer operations at uh, 1.7 million, et cetera. So those are broken out and then they tie into the uh, budget. The second page of, so the first, the important pages they're all important, but the first page is the bylaw, which has the uh, summarized lines. And then if you go to the second page, is a consolidated uh, summary of the rest of the whole document. And it has summary lines that tie back into the bylaw. And then the details that you can go further back into the document on. And so those are also broken out on this um, overview document. And th the next slide um, is the next chart. I'm going to skip that. Well, it didn't make it into this version, but it's in the in your attachment. I've included a chart on the expenditures that are actually funded by property taxes and also added a column on the consolidated summary page. So again, the second page of all the numbers stuff um, to show where the taxes are being spent, in which, which area. For example, uh, in police, uh, there's 1.65 million of tax dollars that are spent in that area. Capital expenditures, for example, even though it's a very large number that we spend, uh, uh, f you know, 4 million, 4.7 million total in the budget anyway, um, of that there's only 300,000 approximately that are coming from taxes. The rest come from reserves and or surplus. So it gives you an idea of where, where there's room to sort of, um, you know, have some uh, tax adjustments. And then there's a slide that shows the, uh, the opposite, which is the funding sources, so where the, where the funds are coming from. Of course, property taxes being a big one at, uh, in the budget number, 7.7 .7 million. And then uh, further into the overview, and hopefully these ones will work. Uh, actually, can you open up that other one? Yeah. This was a, an earlier version I had. And so the second one in the list there. Thanks. Great. Okay, so here's um, a slide that sort of summarizes all the, the main kind of changes in the budget document this year. Um, and so we've got building and bylaw um, departments are now part of community safety, so they're underneath the fire chief. 
um, and HR reception and building and men, so that's all the maintenance stuff within the building. That's kind of its, its own, right now, currently, anyway, uh, its own line. Uh, and then uh, an area in parks, if you're wondering where the parks is, has gone up, is that there is a need for more seasonal staff in there. So, um, And when we get into the budget discussions, I've got a, a sheet also that will compare all the staffing by department from budget to actual. And, for every year in the plan. So uh, we also do have a, no, a new firefighter budgeted for in the plan. And there's also a, a development services technician budgeted for. Uh, those are kind of the highlights of the staff changes. And I'll just go. Uh, as I mentioned, the layout of the sheets has changed so it ties in easier with the consolidated page and the, the bylaw page. And that we've added a column to show so people can see really where the property tax number is is uh, being where the property taxes are being used. And then we do have a consultation document as part of the attachment. Um, I don't have a it up on the slides, but it's a it's a document like this, and it has um, again the same pie chart that showed where the t um, tax dollars are being spent, and then it has a, a space for people to put in their assessment number and click F9 as it stands right now, but that's going to change. But anyway, and it'll give them their tax, estimated municipal tax portion. And then it also, so it has a, an overall, and then it gets into each department. And then it also talks about, you know, what, what would happen if there was a funding decrease, what would happen if there's a funding increase, and then some stats on each department and a link back from this to the actual department, uh, district website. Um, we're having a group called Citizen Budget put the document together, but I can't give it to them until we're kind of at a stage where we know the numbers aren't going to be changing too much. So I just created my own in the interim. So that will be on. We'll make that on the website, though. So. Um, it's the things that are driving the and why the tax, you know, change isn't zero is that we're still deal, dealing with the population growth here, obviously, and that we've had low tax rates in the past, and we are playing catch up a bit there. Um, and we we do have a lot of asset maintenance work to do, in particular uh, the roads program. So uh, we do have very high um, call volumes here. So it's you know engineering staff have the projects that you're going to see in the capital budget, but they also have just day-to-day -day calls that come in. Same with the, you know all the community safety members. So um, we also some some of the risks that are inherent in here that we may. Uh, choose to do something about if, if you would like is uh, we don't have inflation built into any of the basic operating expenditures and that was something I think a couple of years back that council thought well, let's let's just see without just automatically adjusting it because some things don't change and others do but it's just <laughs> highlighting it that it's it, it may or may not be a risk some things aren't going to change but we do for any known contracts it is built in so um, road maintenance is one of the main issues in this five-year plan, so we will be getting to that in the capital budget presentation. Um, we do need to uh, look at the maintenance contract with uh, Main Road because right now it only goes to 2019 and it is being um, tendered, and we may have a new party to deal with, and we don't know what those costs are going to be at this time. Um, DCCs, uh, we have a lot of affordable housing projects um, underway here and, and have already started or underway, and that's great. Um, but we are exempting the DCCs for those, and that does create a bit of a pressure on the DCC fund. So, um, if, For example, wastewater DCCs will run out um, at its current pace by 2020. And the debt uh, goes till 2026, I believe. So, so I did in the in the budget when we get into it. I've um, accounted for that by using the reserve fund for the debt payments instead of the DCCs when the DCCs run out. So, um, but council may choose a different approach or or a, f a different fee to handle that. Um, so, some of the more risks on here is uh, we we are experiencing a lot of growth and it's impacted every um, department in this office and in particular of course the uh, development staff and planning and all that so that's just bringing that forward uh, bylaw staff also we do only have one bylaw officer but of course she's very busy um, and we do have the changes coming forward with the new federal legislation on marijuana so 
Um, the budget does um, anticipate us needing another bylaw officer, so it does have a, a person starting halfway through the year. Um, then we have a labor relations, uh, the QP contract expiring at the end of this uh, 2018. Um, overtime, uh, wastewater department does budget for overtime and uh, was pretty much on track for even coming in a little under budget. Um, but the rest, we've had a lot of overtime this year, 64,000 approximately for the QP admin staff. So. And our new uh, IAFF agreement, of course, we've addressed the, you know, with hiring of new officers and a change in the agreement that we're, we're helping out on the overtime in that area. So. Uh, road program, as I mentioned, and we'll get into that in the capital area. Sewer capacity. So this, this five-year plan assumes an expansion would occur in 2020. It, it may not obviously be able to happen that quickly, but um, if you look at the whole five years and you see a bump in the expenditures, that's why. Um, and it, it is only in the sewer fund, so it doesn't impact property taxes at all. It's just uh, to put it somewhere in case uh, we need to have it there. So. Um, there is a, a need right now is to address some inf infiltration issues. So there's approximately 10 manholes that um, that do need work on right now to fix um, fix them. There's a lot of flows coming in, and once that's done, then the flow study can be done. That'll give us a better picture on the capacity. So. And reserves overall are getting low. Ideally, you know, we would have a lot of a higher reserve balance, but that comes with a price, of course, of higher taxes. So. Um, some opportunities. I think if you go through the 2018 capital page in the detailed uh, budget, you'll see a lot of um, a lot of projects, and it 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 could be too much for uh, staff of this size to really um, take a stab at. So. Um, I think if council um, has a priority um, at roads, sidewalks, et cetera, that would be good to know during the deliberations. And that will also help us. Um, I could then uh, look at the reserves and the tax funding and, and probably get the tax rate down lower than what it is right now. So. Um, grants, we are pursuing as much in the way of grants as we can. Um, the asset management um, focus is a big thing right now, and that's they want you to use the roadmap. Um, so the funding kind of follows the roadmap. You've got to start uh, at, you know, with the identifying, a, we'll have a policy and a strategy, and then once you've got that, you can apply for grants for doing actual studies and this and that. So, um, But we have, we did just get a grant for um, an asset management plan to do with the wastewater so that it was 15,000 so we can um, apply that to the capacity study so that'll help um, and then you could we haven't looked at fees for a long time so it could it's never a fun thing to look at but um, it is an option always <laughs> uh, and then this the next slides just go into um, in detail the breakout of the components so debt servicing capital reserve transfers and operating expenses, sort of what they are and, and what the main components of each of those are. Um, and then you can see the, what the budget was approved last year, what the draft budget is now, what the increase is and where the, increase, where the increases are within the lines of the bylaw. And 5.68%, but that doesn't mean that's how much is coming from taxes. So. And then the slides go into a breakout of each area. So debt servicing is decreasing by 144,000. These are the reasons why. Um, and it, it's really the big reason is we had a, uh, a loan in there for the road program that we were going to do last year, the million dollars, but that's all changed. And I've managed to do um, the funding for it a little differently now to try not to have a, a big um, debt load and, and to try to use shorter term debt if possible so but anyway uh, so the slides explain that the capital expenditure increase is explained there and uh, transfers to reserves so we are going to be using the fire equipment reserve again I, even though we talked about not using it because it was just an in and out every year but this this last year we um, as you know we had staff go and support the wildfire efforts in the interior and there is a, a surplus from that that we're going to put into the reserve and then 
Um, it'll help fund capital equipment within the department, and then there's still a, a need even in 2018 to to um, contribute to that. So, and I, I believe the net uh, going into it for 2017 was 130,000. 130, so, so there we go. And again, just going on about the what the increases are. So, other municipal purposes is kind of like the overall operating expenses, that, but that's what's called in the bylaw. And then you can see, um, so it's increasing by 571,000 and where the changes are coming from. So council's going up by 15 and for the following reasons there and et cetera. So I won't go into it too much, but it's all explained there and each sort of area. And then the sewer fund again, sewer operations are changing, um, but the sewer fund operates on its own, it's self-funded. So. And then the tax increase, so total to be raised by property taxes, assuming that the budget stayed as if it is pre as presented, uh, would be 7.74 million, an increase of 4.45%. We have uh, non-market change revenue within that of 263,000. So that's all the new new growth, so new properties, right? Um, so it's significant, um, but it's not gonna be there forever. And so the budget assumes that it kind of tapers off a bit and we can't sustain this pace that we're going at now forever. But, um, so the average assessed property would have an increase of $66 based on 4.45%. And, and a 1% increase in taxes for 2018 raises $71,000. It's not a whole lot of money. And then the same explanation within the sewer fund. So sewer fund gets its money from parcel taxes and the generation charges. Oops. And then other sources, so um, these are basically all the revenue items. And, and again, if you look at the consolidated summary page, the second page of the actual numbers part, it breaks that 5.3 million out. So you'll see in detail where it all is. And fees and charges. So this is this is the one, of course, where building permit revenues are. And we do have a, um, you know, the budget for building Permits assumes that uh, we can keep up with the growth, and we have got in the in the budget um, another position for that department, as we had last year, but never were able to um, fulfill. But hopefully, uh, the fire chief will speak to that when he's doing his uh, department presentations. And then the reserve fund transfers. Um, there's. You can see the page, there is a page in the budget that shows each transfer and transfers to and transfers from. And I guess, is that it? Yeah. That's it. So, so anyway, that's, that's one of the attachments. The consultation document is another attachment. The actual budget, all the numbers and everything is an attachment. Um, and there'll be the departmental budgets coming forward when, it, when we decide to actually start the deliberations. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, so thank you very much, Mr. Blackhall. So this is sort of an introduction, and I know that's a lot of information um, that you that you we, we all sort of got through, and uh, but that's where we'll have more detailed discussions in the time to come. Okay, so that's where I think, um, like with some capital expenditures, uh, we had that other staircase fail, but then this is where. With the washroom discussion in John Phillips, we were looking at options, and then this is where we can sort of crystallize which option that may drop that budget, say, if we went with a more simplified option, just as an example. You might remember the washroom conversation, but, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to add that one of the attachments is actual detailed uh, capital sheets that okay. support the... Um, the, the capital um, page for 2018 is, is this very small, hard to read page, but um, the detailed sheets are also an attachment, so they break out the, the major kind of projects that we're doing. And the one that's titled uh, Public Space Enhancement Program, so that's the, uh, you know, it, it's always been about 100 to 200,000, but it does have a page now that shows what projects are contemplated within that, and that would be where council may want to um, direct some attention because that's where if we're doing the uh, bench uh, or the wall, the 50,000, that sort of stuff would be within that um, account and that would mean 
probably adjusting what's planned, one right. of the other projects planned to be done in that account. Um, I should also highlight on the capital page, I'm not going to go into it in detail, but there are a couple of items that do require um, some more immediate attention, and that's um, in the fire department. Uh, it's budgeted to replace it, the water tender truck. Um, and, and if you have any questions, the chief can answer that, but it's a, a budget item of 350000 uh, the five-year road program had a budget of 700000 And in the sewer fund, it would be um, the, the uh, repairing the manholes. So those three things um, would require us to get going on some tenders um, sooner than later. So if we could have uh, the committee's um, recommendation to council tonight that, um, that staff would be able to issue the tenders for those three um, projects, then work can get started on the tendering. doesn't mean we're spending it or anything. It just means the tenders are done and every, all the information's there for when we do have approval to move ahead. Okay, so that was for the, um, the water tank? Yeah, water tender truck. Water tender truck. Yep. Water tank truck. What is, a, what is that water exactly? Tender. Microphone. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is for replacing the water tender. Um, I do have a detailed uh, apparatus replacement plan being presented come the uh, department budget presentation. In the 2017 five-year plan, I had allocated uh, 400000 for the placement of the water tender. A water tender is just a uh, fire apparatus that's solely meant for hauling water. We try not to use the word tanker because it confuses things operationally. So we okay. use the term water tender. Um, There'll be fine details on why that needs to go in the actual department uh, apparatus replacement plan, but it's really aging and it's unsafe and it has an old tank on it that's leaking. That's 35 years old. Um, need to move forward on this one uh, sooner than later just to get the documents prepared. Uh, fabrication of a truck can take anywhere from six to nine months, and we do run the risk if uh, we're looking at getting documents out in, in May uh, time frame. That would mean it could end up being a 2019 delivery. So it's important for us just to prepare the tender documents for this apparatus as soon as possible within the next week. Okay, so because then our decisions here would need to be ratified at Council, is there a way that you can extract that information from your apparatus, like take it out of your departmental and have it, because Council will probably want to see that in order for them to ratify that expenditure outside of the rest of the department report? Yes, Your Worship, and I, you know, I did present to the details of that apparatus uh, um, last year in the, yeah. in the budget. So, being a four hundred thousand dollar unit, um, we brought it down to three hundred fifty thousand for this year's budget due to collaboration on the type of unit and the capacity of it uh, with the the team of uh, officers that we're looking at the type of truck to get. Um, I can pull that stuff in advance yeah. if you need be but we do have it in archives from last year's presentation as well. Okay, it'll just be helpful because um, one thing I noticed with the, like with the device that we use, it doesn't retain everything. So like I can't pull every single agenda back. It, it, things start to archive and yes, it's on the website, but then you have to search it. So if there's some way that you can just have that information, I think it's important that we have it, even though we've discussed it before. Yes, Your Worship, we can bring a report for the 29th that would have these three items on it and yeah. the appropriate request at that time. So. Okay, so there's the water tender and then the the manholes, I remember. Yep, the manhole study for this. So there's there's 10 known manholes that need uh, repair, and okay. it's estimated to be approximately 2,500 per manhole, some less, some more, but overall that's probably what's going to come in it. Um, and then the the roads. Uh, the, the roads. Yep. Yeah. No, I would agree that with the road work, we're not the only municipality that needs pavement. So we do need to get. You know, there are. It's the case where we did discuss these at length last year, and I think it's getting. You know, getting even if we approve it, um, we need to secure that we have someone available to do the works when the weather allows it. Okay. Um, the other question I had, and let me just. In terms of um, some of the changes where we talked a bit about staffing, and there was one, I think, for uh, development services technician. Is that a planner? Like, have we, has that department been addressed properly? 
Um, Your Worship, the, uh, that would be a technician in the department, uh, in, in the uh, helping with subdivision department mainly. Okay. Um, the planning department staffing has been a- addressed in the budget. It may not be, it, it's a planner, so they, it's back up to the two, two planners plus the point six, and uh, there's a clerk in there as well. So that, that's like what's in the budget. Okay, this so that the, pl- the planning department has been yeah. addressed in this yeah. budget. Yeah, it may okay. be, you know, that we look at is, is, it, um, is that the right level of staff that's needed and uh, just another uh, a planner or do we need a senior planner? That, okay. That's kind of the discussion, but the, the body itself or a body is in the budget. So. Okay, yep. and then touching on that as well, does this contemplate because... F- for myself, and this is just my view, is I also feel we really need to get the OCP completed. So that's where I think that sort of ties into the planning discussion as to whether or not it's properly resourced so that we can get on with that work. Because it's just everything else is waiting um, because the OCP needs to be resolved and then we can hit the others. So I'd really like to see that official community plan uh, work continue on as well. Okay. Yes, we'll... we'll um address that when we get into the planning department discussion. Okay. Um, com- comments from other questions from members of council? Councillor Berger, then Loggins, then Pearson. Yes, thank you. Um, and thank you so much for the report. It was super easy to understand, and I like how you pointed out all the changes. I really like the added um, file that you're going to put onto the website where people can go in and put their property assessment in, and I, re- I like how it's broken down per per department. So it's fantastic that people in the public can enter how much their assessed value is and then see exactly what they're paying per department within the uh, within the district. I think that's awesome. I think it's a really great thing for people in the community to see. Um, I have mostly compliments, but I do have some um, concerns within some of them. And I know that we'll bring them up when it comes to budget uh, deliberations. The only one that still is sitting with me since our last meeting and um, Maybe I'll ask you, the chair, to refresh my memory. We spoke last meeting about the EV charging station, and um, for me, going into this budget cycle, I think infrastructure is our biggest need. I I think we need to look at our sewer, where we sit. We're growing at an alarming rate. If uh, expansion needs to happen, then that needs to be at the forefront um, for me. I also think that our roads are in dire need of repair. So I'm going to be pretty... um, pretty focused on sort of the needs and wants. For me, the needs are sewer and roads. Everything else is sort of wants. Even when we talked about John Phillips Park, I know that that, for me, that's a want. It would be lovely to put a bathroom facility in there, but when you drive around our community and you look at the roads, our roads are far more important to me than a $100,000 bathroom. Um, so I did a little bit of reading, and sorry, I'm backtracking, but if I go back to my previous comment with the EV charging stations, that's another one that... Um, I wrestle with and we talked about it at the last meeting and um, through you I'll ask staff at the last meeting we did a budget transfer to allow things to go forward Um, so I guess again through you Mr. Blackall has that been tendered already or is because I'm having second thoughts about that and I'll tell you why but has that gone out to tender to it's not a done deal that we're doing those two superchargers Um, through uh, through your worship to Councillor Berger, um, I, I'm not sure if we've tendered that yet. Um, I know there's a lot of work going on to see what's feasible at that desired location, right. and working on uh, issues with the um, with the owner of the property, um, and then looking at once we get that, what kind of grants can we apply for? Right. Um, was- it is meant to be um, significantly funded by grants. So, so it isn't really a, um, a tax. I'll just see on here. Um, the what the issue we dealt with last week was um, that we had some in the 2017 budget. So we've transferred that over. So that was a, an approved transfer, so that they could still keep working on that. That was at eighty thousand. But there's another hundred thousand. Right. So just so then, just to follow up um, with the other members of the council here, uh, there, I think it's a total of 150, and I've gone from the page because I'm reading my notes now. Um, and the what came to council last week is that it's eighty thousand dollars for the two supercharging stations, and there was a grant available for forty thousand. Um, as you all know, I sit on the Sea Park board, and we did two regular 
charging stations at $8,000 and got the half matching grant for $4,000. So I did a bit of looking to see what's the best use of tax dollars for our community. Um, there's 72 charging stations, and this all came from PlugShare.com. There's 72 charging stations within the CRD. 70 of them are regular charging stations. Two are superchargers, and the two superchargers are at Colwood and Uptown, and there's a fee attached to those. The fee is roughly $42 per hour as superchargers work on, um, it's a $0.35 cent per kilowatt charge, so for an hour it's roughly $42. An average vehicle will charge on empty in four hours with the regular station at 30 kilowatts an hour. The 30 kilowatt ones, which are the regular chargers, there's not a significant notice in um, billable time. Uh, on the Sea Park board, we looked at Panorama, who, ex who currently has one. They didn't notice a difference. They said that they could have a car plugged in with the regular charger 365 days a year, and they probably wouldn't notice a significant amount. The superchargers take an hour and 20 minutes to charge because they run it at 120 kilowatts per hour. All that's sort of Japanese to me, but when I look at what's being offered and what people are doing, to know that there's 70 single regular chargers in the CRD and only two superchargers, and then the cost associated with the two superchargers, it's times 10. Mm -hmm. So at Sea Park, our total budget was $8,000, and our total budget here right now, we have 150 but we're looking at it costing us $80,000. To know that the two superchargers that are in the CRD are in the West Shore and then at Uptown, I don't feel that we have the population base to substantiate $80,000 of expenditures. So when we're talking about making a recommendation going back to next council, I personally, I, I can't support spending that amount of money with our population base, knowing that there are chargers, regular station chargers at the Harbor House, Sea Park, the First Nation Reserve. I just feel like that's a lot of money to put on the taxpayers and then to have to come up with the fees and services. I'm just having a sober second thought and I don't, that's something, again, I'm going to be very strict on needs and wants and sewer and infrastructure and through our roads is huge on my needs and, and that's a want I think we can pair back to a regular charger and then still provide a service to people with um, electric vehicles. So I would like that added in with our recommendation to go to council to bring that back up for a discussion of topic and to reduce that amount and not pursue the superchargers. That's good information. Um, Sorry, I do, I do have a couple more. Oh, yeah, but, okay. Um, but they can wait for the next one. Like, I, I want to look at the parking leases and doing away with those when they're up. I want to look at doing away with a John Phillips bathroom. I, I'm really going to be strict on needs and wants, and I'm focusing everything on sewer and infrastructure. So I know that that can come up at the departmental ones. Yep. Um, but I just wanted to catch that supercharger in case it's close to tender. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Loggins. Thank you. And yeah, there were a couple things that came up for me too, and I'll deal with those um, as they as they do through our budgeting discussions. But I did want to thank staff for for all of this. Um, every year, it's been a breeze for me as a newbie to come in and look at these because it's very detailed. Um, the uh, congratulations on the asset management grant. That's wonderful. The citizen budget is fantastic. Um, I'm looking forward to implementing the road prog uh, program. It's nice to see the changes that the IAFF contract uh, has helped. So um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you very much. <laughs> I think the district would need to do a news release once that citizen budget is, is all ready to go and just so we can spread um, awareness like a media release and have the link and then sort of tweet it out, that sort of thing, just like hey, did you know how to do this? Because otherwise, unless you look at the website, you might miss it. So there needs to be some kind of a launch behind it. Um, Councillor Pearson? Yes, um, through the chair to, uh, to our Director of Finance, thank you, Mr. Blackwell, for a, for a good presentation and, and high level. Um, I think there's lots of discussions that will, will flow out of this at the uh, budget deliberations as well. Um, I, I have a couple high-level questions. So the debt servicing I see is about 5% of our, is that, is that our expenditures? Is it about 5% in debt financing? Is that correct? 900 and something, 9.5K? Roughly 5%, I guess I'm just kind of so. So what's the lifespan of that debt, debt servicing, I guess sort of in the big picture? Is it, is it decreasing? Uh, through the chair to um, Councillor Pearson, the um, the term it depends on the asset, of course, um, mm -hmm. the sewer debt 
is expiring in 2026. Right. So so that's good. Um, but we do we will this this plan does um, anticipate more borrowings, maybe not all in 2018, mm -hmm. um, and partly because some of these things need to happen quickly. So try to uh, fund what we can from reserves first, um, and then look at debt. So because the debt, depending on the term, if we have to borrow more than 10 years or more than five years, sorry, we're looking at a voter approval process. So, so we, anything that's important, the, the tender uh, truck is a, uh, could be a 10 year term, but we may look at doing it over five years just to expedite. The process still requires council approval and a bylaw because we still have to go to MFA. So it, it's hard to answer the question, sorry, but because it, it, it's all multiple, but I can bring, when we get into the discussions, I'll bring a, um, a, a term of the debt uh, with us. So. Yeah, and, 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 and that was my question is, is that I, because I make the natural assumption that it's five years or less uh, without referendum. So you said, and, and you, uh, you just meant, touched on the sewer, sewer is going to retire in 2026, but the gap is from 2020 to 2026 in the sewer fund, so that we'll no longer have that capacity in that reserve fund. We've known for a while that that's depreciating. I guess what would be the, the and, and maybe we can answer this as we drill in what would be the what would be the um would be the up i guess or, or the increase that we would need to replenish that reserve i guess that would be my my question on a partial tax basis maybe as well yes uh, through the chair i'll bring that forward definitely for the um for the presentations as an option to the what's in the budget as a plan to fund it from the reserve mm -hmm. which implies that there is a, sur a surplus but in the fund each year, which is a healthy thing because uh, it does go to the capital repairs that are needed in the existing system. And if it isn't being used for capital repairs, council could, um, it would need a change to the reserve bylaw, but council could authorize it to be spent on debt retirement in, in addition to. Perfect. That answers that question. And the last question is is that we we talked about the approximately $1 million per year in road funding over the last. So would that also be included in that 900 K or 900? Is that, is that, is that anticipating borrowing that? Yep. Through the chair. Um, if you look at each, uh, capital page, each one of these detail page, it has the funding sources. So you can see, uh, which in which year it's being funded by debt. Um, it also, we are assuming in here, and we'll get into it more in the capital plan, that there's some roads that um, are being used a lot more than I think was originally planned when the DCC bylaw was was created. Beaten Road, for example, um, is a heavy traffic road, and there's works that need to be done there. If we look at getting the DCC bylaw uh, changed so we could use DCC funds to address that road, so there's that road and another road. Particularly um, the bottom half of correct, the Beaten, yeah. right? So, so there's uh, the DCC funding part, and then there's uh, the debt funding and reserve fund, other reserve funding. But they, it isn't that every year of the so the five-year road program report that came forward from engineering about uh, mm -hmm. a month or so ago um, will come forward again when we get into that departmental budget discussion, or maybe even with this uh, report requesting um, that we get going on the art, the tendering anyway. Um, but that's where the 700 comes from. Each year's number comes from that report from the engineers that put that together. Um, and then what we've done is try to figure out, okay, how can we fund that either all taxes, um, debt, which spreads the tax hit impact over a longer term or reserves, um, et cetera. So it isn't that in 2018, for example, the 700 is, is, um, is not coming from, uh, let me just see, confirm this. Um, it's not coming from any borrowings at all. Okay. Yeah, so, so the nine, you know, the debt servicing number, each year has a different component in it, but I can go through that definitely when I present the, the yeah. De yeah, more now, details. And, and through the chair, do you, uh, thank you. That answers that question on the on the debt servicing because I think, like I say tonight, I'm I'm more interested in the, in like the high level as opposed to the this. Um, and it, it just started one question, um, and it'll be the last question. That I know so the DCC funds available, um, and Beaten Road is a good example. 
do we have to go back and renew the, the bylaw when you're feeding onto a beaten road, where beaten road, the old beaten road isn't, isn't actually not part of that DCC funding, but the new subdivision above that particularly could be DCC, or is, is it? Are they two different entities? I guess that's what I'm asking. Through the, through the chair, uh, we'll have to do the DCC bylaw. So we, the budget does include um, some consultant fees in there to look at that DCC bylaw. And then it will involve uh, ministry approval as well. So it is a, and Beaten Road, yeah, it's, you know, maybe not that, that section that was, but yeah, I mean, that whole road is, um, is used by the development in there. So um, that one, and we did have another um, road, yeah, I'll, church Church Road is a DCC road, um, and but the issue with Knox um, Knox Development Knox Vision um, project, of course, if we're waiving the or exempting the DCCs on the affordable housing project part, so that has an impact as well. And the subdivision staff are working on that as we not as we speak, but <laughs> I hope not. Um, yeah, but are working on that. <laughs> Um, so there are there's a lot of moving pieces with the DCCs, but we look at which charters, you know, is a is a heavily used road, and it's it needs a lot of repair. So yeah, yeah. yeah and I didn't mean to to, to to mind the specifics, but I was just trying to get an understanding of that DCC DCC, DCC source funding. So okay, thank you. Um, yeah, you've answered all my questions at a high level. So thank you, and great presentation. Back to Councillor Berger, please. Yes, thank you. And through you to Mr. Blackwell, sorry, I had one last question that I forgot. Um, on one of your slides of the pie charts, it shows uh, grants borrowing and other, and it's um, 5.3 million. I'm just wondering, are those grants that are pending, or are they grants that we know we'll be receiving? Yeah, through the chair, those are known, okay. known grants. Uh, yeah, some are, sorry, some, if you look in the capital plan, the capital grants, uh, like for the car charging station if we don't go forward with that that would drop that revenue number down but of course it drops the expense number down too so um, so but it's mainly uh, you know the gas tax grant funding and all that and it is broken in the in that consolidated summary page it does uh, try to subtotal stuff so you can tie in a little better yeah. okay anything else from anyone well, that's great I'm just uh, really looking forward to getting getting into it Yes, uh, Your Worship, I'd just like to add, um, we will look so that, um, because it has been brought up about the car charging station, because um, the carryovers did have an $80,000 carryover, so that would be stuff that was already approved for staff to uh, work on, so we'll have to see if that, if Council's wishes to not have that part go ahead, um, then we'll have to see kind of where we're at there and report back, so. Okay. Whether it can actually be done because it has already been approved and staff may have already actioned on it. So. Yeah, okay. sorry, I was just uh, had some concerns on that as to whether it's already pre approved and whether this is a reconsideration, which can't be done if staff have already acted on the motion. So we'll just need to see at what stage that's at and whether we can actually stop the project. But we'll take council's concerns into account. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, Councillor Berger? Yeah, just as a follow-up, and, and that was my reason for, for wanting to bring that up was because I wasn't sure where we were at with it based on our previous meeting. So thank you so much for bringing that um, information forward to see where we stand. And then, sorry, this I promise will be my last one. That's okay. Uh, I'm just Better to ask the questions. <laughs> just, and again, it's high level, just to go into our detailed budget um, deliberations. So through you back to Mr. Blackwell. Um, would it be better, I noticed in here that, and you touched on it in your presentation, that we're not using the rate of inflation, and so it seems weird to see everything stagnant and the same throughout the years. Would that be something that would be beneficial to you to make a determination whether that's something we want to go forward with, or is it too much work for you to see both? I mean, when I read it, um, I was really taken aback that everything looked the same, sort of all five years along, when it came to the inflation sort of portion. So I actually like having it in there because, as we all know, there's inflation. I mean, it, everything sort of goes up, um, whether we're, we base it off CPI or whatever we base it off. Um, so I guess I'd look to you guys maybe and to you. Is it, is it, is it better to have it in there? Does it help you on a budgeting, um, on doing the budgeting report? Thank you. Yep, through the chair, um, it it's definitely a best practice to to budget for it. Um, yeah. 
if you don't use it, it sort of works its way into the surplus and then it becomes available for something else. Um, every year, kind of, we have a surplus draw to help decrease the burden on just the taxes. And another attachment that I forgot to mention is the budget to actual uh, report. So that's a report that we update weekly. Um, I don't always have the variance explanations on it, like is in the actual attachment. But that one at the end of the year, that's uh, our budget time is what I go through and I, okay, this was way under budget or hasn't been done, we're doing it next year. So there's the surplus um, carryovers come from that document. So if there was inflation added and it, you know, it didn't really occur, it's still um, a good thing to uh, budget for. And we can certainly look at adding it in and it doesn't necessarily result in an immediate overall 2% impact because it's only on certain expenditures. Yep. Okay. Councillor Loggins. I just wanted to follow up on that, that we didn't do the, uh, sorry, we did, <laughs> can't talk today, do the uh, in, include inflation in the grant line items. So I think it would be, yeah. it, it only makes sense that we do include it in others as well. Yeah, no, that's a very good observation. So I think, yeah, that would make sense to me. And then for tonight, um, what staff is looking for is that council sitting as committee of the whole recommend to regu the next regular meeting that the water tender manholes, is that the appropriate language still? Um, Your Worship, I, I don't know if I need actual, I'll just bring a report forward on the 29th okay. that will have those three projects um, with the appropriate wording that we're looking for at that time. So, Inspection chambers. Yeah, it's the manholes actually th that okay. need um, that need repair. So. Okay, I'm just wondering if that is still like manhole, it just... <laughs> well, like... It, you know, like I think, like, is that the correct language still, um, or is it not, you know, and uh, anyway, I digress. And the roads um, infrastructure come forward to the regular council meeting with the relevant information. So whatever you feel is the appropriate language there. Okay, so Councillor Loggins is moving that those items come forward to the regular meeting. Any discussion on the motion? Pretty clear. I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried unanimously. And then I think this motion here that the committee of the whole received this report and the draft 2018-22 five-year financial plan for information. Moved by Councillor Loggins again. And then that then would be referred to council as well, right? Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. Is there any public that would like to comment on the financial plan or provide any comments at this stage? Okay, um, thank you, media, for attending in our one public. I was surprised. Like it's your budget, it's taxes, it's something everyone complains about, and then there's nobody here. So, it's always been that way, and I, I'm always a bit, I'm surprised. Anyway, motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Councillor Pearson. All those in favor, adjournment. Opposed, and that too is carried unanimously.